Hello, my name is Dr. Sumana Narsiman. I'm Assistant Professor of Pediatrics at Case Western Reserve University. I had the privilege of co-authoring the article titled Youth Onset Type 2 Diabetes, Lessons from the Today Study with Dr. Ruth Weinstock, Distinguished Professor of Medicine at SUNY Upstate Medical Center in Syracuse, New York. This article will be published in an upcoming issue of the journal Mayo Clinic Proceedings. The Today Study stands for Treatment Options for Type 2 Diabetes in Adolescents and Youth. It is the first NIH-sponsored, multi-ethnic, multi-center, randomized controlled trial of youth onset type 2 diabetes to compare three therapeutic approaches to maintaining glycemic control and to examine diabetes-related complications and cardiovascular risk factors over time. This review summarizes the problem of type 2 diabetes in youth and the primary and secondary outcomes of the Today Study. We also discuss the significance of the findings from this important trial for the management of type 2 diabetes and its complications in the pediatric population, as well as the care of these patients as they enter adulthood. Obesity is the most important risk factor for the development of type 2 diabetes. The rates of childhood obesity have increased dramatically in the past three decades, with a disproportionate increase in prevalence of overweight in children from minority groups. Type 2 diabetes, previously diagnosed only in adults, is now increasingly diagnosed in children. Recent data in the United States indicate approximately 20,000 children are affected by type 2 diabetes, and the rate of new cases of type 2 diabetes in children is 8.5 per 100,000. Risk factors for development of type 2 diabetes in children include being overweight, having a family history of diabetes, race, ethnicity, having signs or conditions associated with insulin resistance, having been small for gestational age, and having maternal history of diabetes during pregnancy or gestational diabetes. The today study randomized 699 children with recent onset of type 2 diabetes between 10 and 17 years of age who were all overweight or obese. The three treatment arms were metformin, metformin plus lifestyle, and metformin plus rosiglitazone. The primary outcome of the study was glycemic control. Results showed that approximately half of the participants could not maintain glycemic control by using metformin alone. Combination therapy with metformin and rosiglitazone resulted in better durability of glycemic control, and metformin plus intensive lifestyle intervention was intermediate but not superior to metformin alone, as shown in figure two in the paper. Deterioration in glycemic control was associated with rapid loss of beta cell function that could not be explained by differences in adherence or body mass index. The rate of loss of pancreatic beta cell function is much higher than reported in adults with type 2 diabetes. Within four years, youth with type 2 diabetes had a high incidence of comorbidities and complications including hypertension, microalbuminuria, and high LDL levels. Also concerning was retinopathy that was seen in 13.7% of patients. Table 1 summarizes these findings in the paper. The results from this unique and very important trial bring to attention the difficulty in maintaining glycemic control in youth onset type 2 diabetes, highlighting the critical need to promote a healthy lifestyle to prevent or postpone the development of type 2 diabetes in those at risk. Clinicians who treat youth onset type 2 diabetes should carefully monitor glycemic control and add insulin when necessary. Ongoing surveillance and treatment of cardiovascular risk factors and diabetes-related comorbidities and complications are essential to prevent early morbidity and mortality. It is important to engage the family and use a culturally appropriate, family-centered approach to diabetes education and ongoing care. It has been my privilege to be part of this important NIH-funded trial and have the opportunity to collaborate with leaders in the field of diabetes across the United States in the 15 centers that participated in the Today trial. I would also like to thank Professor Ruth Weinstock while co-authoring this article. The Today study group is now studying this cohort prospectively and look forward to reporting on the long-term outcomes in youth onset type 2 diabetes. The study would not have been possible without the cooperation and trust of all our patients and families. On behalf of the Today study group, I thank you and hope that you will find this review useful in the care of youth with type 2 diabetes in your practice. 
We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.com. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.